Would you call yours an impressionist style landscape painting? Um, that's a good one because when I did this one and stepped back, I thought, oh, you know, the spirit of Monet. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, how did that happen? You know, I was like, because when I paint these, well, the final painting, I take about two hours. So I'm making a decision. I have to do that to override my compulsiveness. So when I work that fast, I really don't get back and look at it. And I thought, oh, good heavens. And then I had to explain to everybody that that's Highway 101. That is not Monet's bridge. <laughs> and, but I would say it's more expressionism. I, it's a kind of a com it is like to me the gesture, the directness is uh, more because I like to take one area and say it was one brush stroke if I can get away with it. That's what I love. Um, it surprises me that you know that, that lower one there is so tropical. Right. That's if you go out this time of year. Well, <laughs> if you don't mind getting soft. If you go and look, see, I would never look down because I never did want to get my feet that wet in, in um, hiking around in the coast and marshlands. That's skunk cabbage. And when you take, and it's a bright day, and you look down in that, you feel like you're in Gauguin land. And so I thought, why not? So I took those colors, and I noticed as I was driving up, that they're in blooming and quite a nice bloom now. So that was that, and it surprised me too. <laughs> I thought, this is tropical. And uh, uh, yeah. In, in the, that column, that, that red column was really good. Yeah. Well, I cheated mm -hmm. on the column. That's a, a, what do you call oh, that tree, the one that grows so fast? Alder. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are these oil, oil or acrylic? <laughs> They're oil. I have never been able to master acrylic. No? I am um, in awe of people who can use it, but I, I guess I so love the whole smell and mm -hmm. the whole process of oil, and I just know after all these years how much a loaded brush is going to take me, and that has taken me years to figure that out. Just practice and practice and practice. For every one you see here, there's probably three that I ditched, so I mm -hmm. still don't hit on every one. What did I Yeah, one thing I wanted to ask you because I we talked and you can, you touched on it some, but you yeah. Know, what I I also took um, lithography. And, School, and so I really love printmaking. I never had the feel for it. I love it. I appreciate it. But I love how Yana's prints meld. In other words, there are many, many layers, but you can feel as almost, almost taking the paper it's printed on and pulling it out so that you're working with the surface plane. And it, and it gives a richness to the color that I think is really nice. Oh. What's just surprising in these prints, uh, I discovered water-based inks. You know, as we <laughs> talking environmentally oriented, when I discovered that I don't have to deal with those heavy duty chemicals, there are chemicals in it too, but they don't smell bad, and then you can just wash the parts in water. <laughs> So uh, when I discovered that, it was really a revelation because, I mean, revelation because it behaves, you know, you can't tell that whether it's water-based or oil-based. They behave nicely. The problem may be that um, in oil, you probably can go heavier, you know, under the uh, applying. I like the see-through. I like the looking into. So there are many layers 
of applying the um, car the colors the shapes mm -hmm. because uh, that's how I could achieve that depth uh, and it takes maybe five four five uh, and layering I mean you know passing because you create on a, and I, I work on plexi plexiglass so I have a drawing underneath it so I can see what what's happening because when you have certain shapes there I may go first very light blue the whole thing and then I add shapes maybe the yellow um, then I have to remember where the yellow shape or shapes were because it's on the paper on it. and here I have mm -hmm. practically well, paint uh, <coughs> with the plate again mm -hmm. so the drawing helps me to see okay I have it's really one has to be very organized I call it more like a choreography because I have to know from one step to another to another and it has to flow otherwise I get stumped if suddenly I am not prepared for another step mm -hmm. the ink may dry on me or the paper can, can get torn. Yeah, torn it happens sometimes that it doesn't pull off nicely so um, it takes a very long time to, to go through that process. And when it's all dry, several, several days, uh, then I can go over and print the top layer, the first plane. So can I ask you a, a, sure. a technique question? Yeah. So is how you're doing it is you have a, a clear plexi and you're doing one color at a time and you're painting on that plexi and you're using a a picture underneath to, mm -hmm. to for right. sure illustration. Right. Yeah. And then are you laying a piece of your paper on top of it and, and rubbing it, or how are you lifting that model for top? Oh. Um, originally, when you are trained as a bridge maker, you are supposed to <laughs> lay the paper over the plate. Mm -hmm. One of our members, Tori, uh, at one point said, no, I do it the other way. And I realized, of course, for uh, for something like etching, when you go into the deep grooves, that would need to be done over because then you have a bit better pressure. Mm -hmm. But for uh, mono prints, when it's just flat, I can turn it over. So you got your paper this way. And so I right, which way. is much easier for the uh, registering. Yeah. Of course, I have a. Uh, backing underneath so that it still gives it's not hard uh, base mm -hmm. but that really was an eye opener too and when you are doing you know multiple layers of the different colors are you actually getting shine through or like the colors that are underneath like the, the beginning layers they're informing the colors on yes. top right yes. because you're getting almost like water right, color. right. Yeah. okay yeah okay yeah. um do you do, I mean, if you were just going to have your painting underneath and you were going to paint on it and print it, you've got it in reverse, right, when you right. pull it off. So right. now, have you already recalculated that yes. before you show? Okay, yes. so you already have calculated all. the reverse so you don't come out with something that feels right. like. Right. Okay. I so that's, know. and then another yeah. step. Then, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. In printmaking, if uh, the result is mirror-like, so if I want to print my right arm and I look at it this way, the thumb is on the right side, but when I print it, it's on the left side. So the image has to be rethought ahead of time. Do I want to have it looking this way or that way? Just using your own hand. <laughs> You know, I, I used to teach, I was teaching for 40 some years. So, yeah, I'm used to <laughs> showing, show me. 
instead of telling me, show me. <laughs> this is kind of an ignorant question, not being a pregnant person. You then run it through a press? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, do. I have a very primitive press. Uh, it doesn't have gears. It's all wow. new for if anybody remembers the new new for. Yes. Uh, there are maybe three, four in existence <laughs> still, maybe. Uh, it has a huge wheel. And so it's a physical work mm -hmm. when I want to print. So I cannot go too deep. I would love to do uh, deep. Call graphs. I can't do that on this press. I probably would break it <laughs> or break my back. Uh, so yeah, it would be hard. I don't think I will be able to achieve this uh, by hand printing. No, hand I don't think so. No. I've got some questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, 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 you okay. Go. Um, was your upbringing more urban or more rural? In I am a city girl, city girl with love, <laughs> in love with nature. <laughs> because I was taken to uh, the woods, to, you know, <laughs> to nature, from the time I learned to walk. My parents. And then you mentioned Kandinsky clay and machines. Were you in any way uh, aware or influenced by the bathhouse and what was going on there? Yes. That was... Yes. Because the Bauhaus was more futuristic though. Um, now we look at it, I say, eh. <laughs> they were too naive or too idealistic. But I like those clean lines they used. Yeah. You know, that clean, yeah, shapes, lines. You were talking about layering. And yeah, you're layering. Yeah. <laughs> and when I began a painting, I will use an underpainted color, but I don't use an earth, I'll use cadmium red light, thin down. I'll use cadmium yellow light. Um, I'll use these screamer colors. And the, I started doing that about five years ago because <coughs> I'm living on the coast and there's so much gray. And I thought, I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> so this was a way to push me to look at gray in another way. Gee, mm -hmm. that's prime. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyway, so it, that's one of the, um, I would say, the most fun I've had in the last five years is working off of that ground color and to have it make sense. It pushed the color in ways that I hadn't anticipated and just really liked. Um, I don't use the acrylic as an underpainting either. I use the um, thin oil, which then if you use those reds, it takes a while for to dry. The one in the corner where Bob is standing next to, I use the bronze metallic mm -hmm. color to push those um, colors to the evening to uh, get them into that range. You, yeah. you, use, uh, you have to use some kind of gesso, right? Oh yeah. No, when and you tint it with oil. No, no, it gesso dries and then I just paint over it with red. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering about your palette. You have the most wonderful greens. Do you use a, a whole bunch of greens, or do you mix? I mix. I have found that, I think that's odd you would say that, I'm always trying to find a pre-mixed green. I haunt, uh, gambling, I haunt. I, I always figure if I pay more money for my oil paints, I'll get them to mix my colors for me. <laughs> but um, I, I do, I constantly mix. But I started with, and I can get almost anywhere I'm going with six colors. That's how I learned to paint. I have three. It's a red, yellow, blue of cool and a red, yellow, blue of, of warm colors. And was never allowed to use black um, and white sparingly. And um, because they didn't want to tint it, tint it out. So I would say that 
the color that I love the best is the phthalo green mixed with uh, alizarin. And that gets you across the color wheel. And then you can tint to a gray if they're equally. And you get the most beautiful grays from that, depending whether you push it more to the alizarin or more to the phthalo. And then um, I just love it as a dark. It gives the richness. But no, I mix. I'm constantly mixing. How did you get that blue or that no, was, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was um, a long time. That one went through several metamorphoses, is that what you say it? Um, I wanted the time of day. I wanted that just at night, just before mm -hmm. it gets dark and the color kind of just goes. Mm -hmm. So I ended up glazing over. So that's where I started with the bronze, the metallic paint. Mm -hmm. And then I used a green, um, kind of a moss green, warm green. Mm -hmm. And then I went to those screamer ceruleans and those turquoises. Mm -hmm. And I started mixing all of those together. And I thought, and then when it was like, whoa, that really is bright, um, that's when I put it on. and, it, and that particular combination got it to work, the layering. How, how large is your skin? I have a 900 square feet. It's huge. Mm -hmm. That's my reward. <laughs> uh, no, my husband, when he retired, built it for me.